might be a little echogenic because he might have some mesenteric adenitis. So here his little lymph node is a little, little prominent. So I did the radiant flow on the lymph node. Nice. Measured it about one centimeter. And then a couple of the smaller lymph nodes. And then you can start seeing the, the appendix right there with a 24 megahertz transducer. Again, 24 megahertz is crazy. So a dual with compression. See how much it compresses down to three uh, millimeters. So again, this is psoas muscle. And here you see the appendix. And when, sometimes the appendixes are pretty long, so I like to show it in segments. If I, if I can't get it all in one image, iliac artery, iliac vein, psoas muscle. And then you can see the appendix draping over the iliacs. Here you see a good section of it. And then finally the tip. Right there, and then transverse to the end, and then that's it. I found his quick. Here's the appendix. Here's the iliac artery. See, it's tiny. It looks normal. That's it in sagittal. This is with a 9 megahertz transducer. Bladder. And then he had some diarrheal symptoms. So uh, I happened to go onto the left side, and his, his descending colon was very thickened. So this is the, the colon right here. You can see it's pretty thickened. About seven, almost 7 millimeters in thickness and then this is sagittal so here you see the about the sigmoid colon region below this this is the bladder here below this would have to be the rectum so sigmoid colon and descending colon very thick so no no real hyperemia sometimes with patients with crohn's they'll have hyperemia and a, a lot a lot of fat stranding and this is the, with the 24 megahertz transducer you can see that line which we're kind of seeing here which somebody will see that I'm like oh my god is there like you know ascariasis or something like that but no it was just an actual um, serosal lining of the bowel. That's just very echogenic. So again, 24 megahertz transducer and some fat edema next to the, the bowel. So here, a tiny bit of free fluid. Again, bladder. And then this is a, a panoramic. And here you can see the external and internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscle. And you see the entire length of the thickened bowel. Oh, and then the left kidney up here, of course. I like to do panoramics a lot. Okay, next case is another appendix. Sorry guys, I do a lot of appendices. So yeah, again, right over quadrant. Gallbladder. Many times as I do the appendix with the linear, I just start with the linear. If they're slender, if they're a little bit bigger, I'll start with the curve. But almost every time I'll start with the linear because you can see there's just limited images of the gallbladder and right kidney. Right? And then transverse and then go down to the source of the pain. It's thickened, a little bit of hyperemia. Again, psoas muscle here. Non-compressible, you can't see it over here, but it's uh, 0 0.98, so about one centimeter. Oh, here you can see it, 0 0.98 centimeters, so 9.8 millimeters. Here you can see some fecal material within there. And then sagittal, pretty plump. That's the tip right there, iliac artery, empty bladder, uterus. And then with the 24, and wow, look at the fluid levels with the fecal material inside the appendix, the fat stranding, look at that, amazing. So here I'm getting it about 1.1 centimeters, 1.01 centimeters, sorry. And then the sagittal looks pretty prominent, fat stranding, you can see subcutaneous fat too. And that's a clip and this in transverse all right next case. okay next is uh this is i think a liver gallbladder i don't remember this one but same as the abdomen complete beginning in the liver left lobe aorta i like to get the aorta to try to stray here so you can use tgc's to clean out any echoes that are always going to be behind the sma region and then with the radiant flow Looks like candy. Looks nice. I think color Doppler still does better because there's a lot of like artifactual elements here. All right. Cauda lobe, ligamentum venosum, IVC, IVC with the radiant flow. Cool. All right. Beautiful. Sorry, my thing messed up. All right. So here's uh, the right kidney. You see the radiant flow in the kidney. Look how awesome that looks. All right. So measure the the, the liver. It's normal. And then transverse. So again, left lobe superior to inferior, finally reaching the pancreas, 
and then I'll focus on the right lobe again. Nice hepatic veins, nice portal veins with the branching, left and right with the right posterior and right anterior, gallbladder, ligamentum teres, nice gallbladder, measure the wall, CBD, portal vein with the, and the hepatic artery with the radian flow, a little bit of IVC too. Left lateral decubitus for the gallbladder. Make sure there's no hidden stones. All right, so that's ligament and teres there. He had a little bit of echogenicity here. Now, many times people call that hemangioma, but that's actually a pretty common finding near the ligament and teres. It's a focal fatty infiltration, pretty common. But a lot of people misdiagnose that as a hemangioma. You see there's like no flow at all. So this is my pancreas protocol. So luckily it's not a, it's not an appendix. <laughs> so I begin in the epigastrium, pancreas transverse. You got the little bit of uncinate process, head, body. Some of the tail there with some shadowing of bowel gas. More of the tail there. With color. Try to get every angle I can to get more of the tail. Here you can see the left kidney. There's a portal splenic confluence. You can see the portal, uh, the splenic vein with uh, radiant flow. This is a nice view of the IVC. Even though I'm trying to get the pancreas to sag, this is IVC with the right renal artery. Pancreas is sag body, tail. I angle towards the spleen from the tail to get a longer view in sagittal. Radiant flow. And this is with the linear probe, 9 megahertz. Pretty much repeating the same thing. Patient can drink water, you can have them fill their uh, stomach up com uh, completely and you'll get a, a good view of the pancreas as well. All right, we'll just finish it up with this last one. It's another appendix. So gallbladder, right kidney, transverse gallbladder, right kidney, liver, and then you can go downstairs to the right lower quadrant. All right, so like right lower quadrant, sag, a couple of lymph nodes, probably ileum there. That's probably already, yeah, the colon. You can see the house A little bit of free fluid. I was having trouble seeing. Usually when I start writing, lower, instead of, Going directly to the appendix, I start right, right lower quadrant taking images is because I'm searching. A little bit of free fluid, so I'm searching more. LEX. Then I do the bladder, some free fluid behind the bladder. We see this quite frequently, not that big a deal. And then finally I found the appendix. So a transverse. You see it also has material inside. A little bit of hyperemia with the, with the B flow. And the power Doppler, non-compressible, nine millimeters, wall thickening for sure, greater than two millimeters, hyperemia, and then that's the tip of it in sagittal. And then this is proximal appendix coming off, so this would be cecum here, coming off the cecum, hyperemia, and then with the twenty-four megahertz transducer. Look at that. One, th one thing for sure, these uh, very high megahertz transducers make everything huge. So here's your appendix. That's the, the wall there. You see the material inside. Hyperemia. Fat stranding. It looks like thyroid. See this clip. The transverse. And then sagittal. Look at that. Look at the layers of the bowel. The five layers. What we call the gut signature. That's just cool. 